today's Deep Pocket episode, I would like to introduce to you a content creator who has shown great interest in creating quality content regarding finance. Having, in, having to influence a total of 250k followers on TikTok, here is Antoinette from Money Health Check. Hello! Hi, Abby! Thank you for having me! <laughs> um, I'm glad that you accepted my request on having to interview you na ha kilig char okay so na kilig okay go just a just a brief background i saw her in a seminar talk in pfs and i really wanted to interview her because i i can see that she's passionate in what she is doing so yay for today i would get to um interview her yay so Okay, so earlier we talked na you are still an undergraduate, but I heard you're a um, financial advisor. So, how is that? Like, do you, I heard na kailangan normally graduate ka. Paano ka naging qualified to be a financial advisor? Well, it's a common misconception that you need a graduate degree to enter into the financial services business. But in my case, it's really more um, based on skills. So my own financial advisor recruited me back when I was 17 years old. So she saw the potential I had with my skill set and then my ability to talk. So she said, join, okay, join us and then see if it will pan out for you. So, I had to undergo trainings, I took the licensure exam, and then one thing led to another. I'm here in front of you, and I'm, I'm talking for Investa, di ba? <laughs> Mga investa natin. Cool that you started at such a young age, but how did you juggle your academics and your social life and um, learning a lot of about financial the financial industry how did you manage to balance everything okay so actually it came from i developed the habit this kind of work ethic ever since i started working at a young age so when you start very young you get to learn a lot of things along the way so i started hustling ever since i was 17 years old because i came from an interesting background so okay share ko lang um, I was actually born in a privileged family. So we had the money because we had bodyguards, we had helpers, we had lots of cars. But then there came a point wherein my dad ended up bankrupt. So we lost everything. We lost everything. We lost the money. And we were also buried in debt. So, you know, because of that, my parents had to separate. They had to go on their separate ways. And we were living in a completely different life. So it was a huge shift. Diba? And because it, it got so bad, I had to push myself to start working. So that's when I started going into a lot of side hustles, uh, freelancing, modeling. I was video editing. I was also a host. And I was all doing all of these different things just to have that stable source of income. And then that was when I experienced going through the financial difficulties that anyone could possibly think of. So, all the mistakes, all the financial mistakes that you could think of, I saw it with my mom. Because she had, um, she was used to this lifestyle wherein she would spend a lot, buy all the latest bags. So, even when we were broke, she was also spending just as much. So, when money would come in, it would also come out just as fast. And that's, sabi ko, okay, paano kaya ako mag-graduate nito? How will I enter DLSU, diba? How will I graduate high school? So that's when I started hustling. And I was doing so well to the point wherein I was already earning a six-figure income. So I was going to school during the day and then hustling at night. So if you're wondering how I was able to, how I was able to manage that, I did it. So I didn't have a social life, I would say. I had friends, but most of my time was dedicated either to going to school and then hustling at night. And because I was working that hard and earning that much, I realized that I also wasn't saving. So every time I would look at my bank account, uh, I, there would be just like maybe 5,000 sa account balance ko. So I was earning that much, but I couldn't keep any of it. So I knew that there was a problem. 
So that was when my own financial advisor reached out to me and started educating me about finances, this and that. So that was when I also started developing the habits of learning how to, you know, be productive, how to treat time like money, and how to time block also, specifically for certain activities. Do you, since you started at a very young age, do you regret like not being able to have fun at that age? You, 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 seventeen, dapat nasa labas ka, ka party. I mean. Um, yung mga experience ng mga normal teenager, yung mga first copy love, ganon. Siyempre, you had to be mature. So, um, did you, like, get na sana I got to like make the most out of my childhood days and teenage days? Well, I would say I did enjoy my money's worth when I started earning. So, that was when I started buying all the latest bags. I started treating myself out to nice dinners because I was deprived of it for so long. Eh. I was deprived of it for so long that when I started earning, I felt the need to spend it right away. So, during those times, I was working hard, but I was also spending money to uh, treat myself, diba? Right? But even when I had that money, I felt unfulfilled. I felt unhappy because I was working so hard, but... I still felt like there was something lacking. And that was why, as you've mentioned or asked me earlier, ano ba yung why ko talaga of why I'm doing this, right? What's the reason behind why I'm hustling so hard? And I realized I was really chasing security and also freedom for myself and for my family. Because the reason why I'm grinding so hard is so that I could be able to provide the lifestyle that I want for them. It's to be able to wake up in the morning so that I could either choose to, if I want to eat pancit canton, then I'll eat pancit canton, diba? Right? If I want to eat steak, then I'll do that. Or if my grandma wants to go to Japan, then I'll take her there, right? So that really is the tool that I'm using to give the best life that I can to my family. And that's exactly what pushes me to hustle as hard as I do now. Uh, oh, okay. I, I now I see why the reason why oh, behind what keeps you going, and I would like to ask, um, how did you see this opportunity? Shempre, it doesn't come easy. Na magi model, diba? You had to look for something na that will hire you. How did you um, manage to um, create a job for yourself? Na ikaw mismo naghanap, and how did you? became that person that mayro nang six six digit income at such a young age so how did you work for that what drove me in the beginning was fear fear because nung time na yon um ano na yun eh people were preparing for college entrance exams so do you, do you still remember that feeling where everyone was panicking about whether they're gonna pass uh-huh. and then everyone was like oh okay I, I got into LaSalle I got into UP but that wasn't my worry at that time my biggest worry was not being able to graduate high school because we couldn't afford it Mumbaga, may account balance kami sa high school na yon. so the thing is if you aren't able to pay off your tuition fee you can't get your diploma you can't walk on stage so that was my biggest fear. Sabi ko, what's the point of me passing Lasal, di ba? If I'm not even able to provide the recs needed. So that's what pushed me to really work. Sabi ko, I have no choice because it's not like my mom will be able to do it for me. So any opportunity, any racket that came into my way, I, I just took it. So I grabbed the opportunity and I just figured it out later on. So I wasn't always a good speaker. But when people saw that I could own my skills and eventually become a better speaker, they got me as a host. It was more of a trial and error thing. And then when it came to commercial modeling, I went to 20, 30 VTRs in, in a week. And sometimes I wouldn't even land a project. So it was really dealing with a lot of rejections, a lot of failures along the way. And just it's all about activity. So I can't really control if they're going to accept me or not. I can't control the market conditions. I can't control whether or not um, uh, my mom would be able to save. But I can always control the amount of activity that I put out there, the amount of auditions I take, and I can always wake up earlier for that. 
So, yun yung naging driving force ko behind hustling so hard. Kung bakit gigil nagigil ako at such a young age. Oh, I can see na you've been through a lot mm-hmm. because of your experience. So, my next question would be, how, syempre may burnout doon. Like, you've, you've worked hard for so, for, for a long time and you're, you feel na dapat, di naman dapat maranasan mo siya. Di ba? Like, observing through your surroundings sa school, parang yung problema mo, ikaw lang nag-carry. So, how do you handle the stress that, ano, you've experienced? Mm-hmm. Parang, what what made you strong? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. What made me strong? So, in this business, in the financial advisory business, for me to be successful, there are only three things that I need to do. So, number one, I need time to think about strategy. How I can grow my business. How can I, how I can grow my team. Diba? And the second one would be to do a lot of content creation. So, you're a content marketer yourself. Eh? You know the value of putting out content for people. Right? And then the third thing that I need to do is to interact with my community, with my audience, and with my clients. But those are the three things that I need to do to be able to succeed, right? But how do I balance it? How do, how do I manage all of those activities? I cannot do all of it in one day. So what I do is really set time or schedule in um, moments of, of joy, about the things that make me happy. So I love to watch K-dramas. I love to go on Netflix. And, you know, I, I love to listen to K-pop also and follow my idols. That's it. So I make sure that I set time for strategy. And like today, today is a Wednesday. So this is focused more on interviewing, Q&A. So I'm on Q&A mode right now. So tomorrow, I'll focus more on interacting with my clients, right? And following up with them. So it's really being able to time block your schedule because you cannot really do all things at once. And we humans are really bad at multitasking. So kailangan talaga naka-separate siya. So I find a schedule that works for me and I set it in my calendar. If wala akong me time, if wala akong family time, I will be burnt out in probably four or five days. So you need to be able to set time to take care of yourself. I agree with what you said and yeah yeah that's the secret on how you can manage a lot of things at once um it's just taking one step at a time like one day at one day at a day <laughs> okay let's say it okay so next question is that um you're a student too it's just fascinating for me I just knew it earlier guys okay so may pasok eh. So, how do you... Siyempre, may stress ngayon na pandemic, yung news, yung wala pang plans. So, how do you manage that as a student, as someone who creates content, as a, as, as a someone who who advises people? What do you do for yourself? like How, how do I manage it also with schoolwork? Mm-hmm. Well, if... I'm dealing with a lot of overwhelming emotions because one of the things that actually makes me so anxious is when I see a packed schedule. When I see na lahat parang nakablock, like, ito, my, my, I have to do a video for a brand and then the next day, I have to do a speaking engagement. Tapos, I have to work on a school project. So, means na overwhelmed ako, di ba? Mm. So, what I, the first thing that I do is, you know, I, is awareness. So, I sit with my emotions just like how you would with a friend. Right? And what really helps me is to write it down. So I do keep a journal every day. And instead of thinking about, you know, um, why is this happening to me? Bakit kasi ganito? It's too early for me. Then I think about how I can react to the situation. Or or I, I basically ask myself better questions. So the, the questions that I always ask myself every day is, number one, uh, who needs my A game today? So I think of the list of people. I think of my community. Then the second question would be, um, uh, what can I do to inspire more people? So I, it's really more on the shift of mindset for you to be able to respond to things accordingly or well. Because you also have to remind yourself that people who work 
from a uh, work from home setup like you we're also doing online classes de ba? Um, let me just remind you that you are not just studying or working from home you are at home during the worst global crisis trying to study and trying to work so it's really important that you set time for yourself take breaks take a leave and give yourself some time to just recover and to just you know take care of your own well-being ganun siya Ooh, I cool kasi parang you set such a great system for yourself so siguro that's how you keep your self in check then next so let's proceed the month through through questions relating to your content um what made you think tiktok is a good platform to teach financial literacy Right. Uh, because when we think of TikTok, we think of people dancing. I mean, but what was your first impression of, of TikTokers, Abby, when you first started? Hey, it's just a lot. It's just a lot of acting, right? And then it was trending on It Really Hurts or yung mga dance challenges. But, you know, I actually heard of TikTok back then in late or early 2019 from Gary Vaynerchuk. So I listened to a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk. And... He said back then that if you want to grow organically, if you want to grow your biz- business or grow your audience, go to Musicaly slash TikTok or go to LinkedIn. So he said it back then, and you know he was the one who predicted that Snapchat would boom, that YouTube would boom. So I thought, when I when I went on the app, I saw dancers, but then I started seeing more lawyers. I saw doctors giving tips. So sabi ko parang wala pang finance content creator that puts out videos about financial literacy. So I could be okay, medyo undervalued pa yung TikTok for personal finance content creators. And you know, honestly, we live at a time where everything is fast-paced, right? Not everyone is willing to sit down and to listen to someone talk about the stock market for one or two hours. Well, iba yung attention span natin especially with the Gen Z. Right? So I thought, okay, I could be able to explain financial concepts in under 60 seconds. Kaya siya eh. Because if you're familiar with Nas Daily, um, I'm not, are you familiar with him? So he makes a lot of viral one-minute videos. And the reason why it goes viral is because he's able to squeeze all of that information in one minute. So TikTok is pretty much the same thing, except you follow trends, you can follow music. And that's exactly what pushed me to get on the app. And little did you know, after six months of creating content, I was able to grow a following of, of 250,000 intellectuals, diba? And who would have thought na personal finance would actually be a trend in 2021, right? So I, I really saw this as an opportunity during this crisis eh? because everyone is on their phones. Everyone is on TikTok for that escapism feeling. So, why not go there to teach about personal finance and, of course, make it fun? <laughs> um, actually, you're, I heard earlier na you're 21. And what, diba, syempre, mga clients mo, it's not the same age mo lang. So, you have clients that are older than you. How do you make it? How do you convince them that um, you are parang, a credible um, person that will handle their finances. How do you how do you assure them that um, I am like Ant- I am Antonet and I can show you that this is the this is the plan that I would suggest for you. So mm-hmm. how do you prove them? Because of course, my doubts. Yan eh. Para sure. mga hindi mm, naman sa nag ano ako. Mga, may mga boomer na parang ha hindi naman bata parang ganun so how do you go against that um, stereotype ganun true okay let me share you a, a kwento when I first started out so syempre w- when I'm new uh, I'm still in my 20s I'm a Palsy major I'm still young unproven and inexperienced right so how can I exactly tap my network so the first 20 people that I reached out all rejected me. <laughs> Yung iba nag scene zone pa. So they all ignored me or they would say, no, maybe now's not the right time. Yung maganito. So technically, I was a nobody. I was a nobody in the industry. Then I realized, okay, how can I become someone that is loved, 
respected in this industry despite my age. And I knew that the solution to that was branding. Being able to build your own personal brand on social media. Because we're in 2021 right now, everyone is online, everything is digital. So the only way you can really network is to put yourself out there. So that's when I started thinking of ways to provide a lot of value to viewers. Diba? Because sabi nga nila, if you give, if you provide massive value, then that is going to determine how much income you're going to earn. So I was able to build my brand because of TikTok. I started posting videos there, teaching people how to invest, how to manage their money, the different uh, personal finance concepts. And because I was able to grow a following, it made people think or it put me as a thought leader in the industry. Right? Because of course, you would want to get a financial advisor that looks like she knows what she's doing. Right? And for me to let people know that, I need to know that I need to show that I am educated about this topic, that I know how to deal with, I know how to compare certain plans, I know how to compare investment vehicles. So social media helped me a lot with that. And building credibility is all about testimonials also. So what I do is I love to share the messages or the, D, the, num- the, the number of DMs that I receive from viewers, from fans about how my videos have helped them change their, the way that they look at money or the way that they handle their finances. So when you put yourself in that position, as a financial advisor, now you, the problem is choosing kung ano yung client na gusto mong itake. So now, parang nagiging magnet ka na for people because when people approach you, it's not because you're a stranger, it's because they know that you're a credible person, that you're a thought leader in the industry. So now I don't struggle so much on um, reaching out to people because it's the other way around now. They look for me. They try to get me as their financial advisor because they know that uh, I'm credible enough to do that. Wow, actually, that's so inspiring of you. Nah, you just started. Like the, the act of just starting made you who you are right now. And siba, I heard you told me earlier that you study political science and you're working at the financial industry. So, um, how did you is like how did you find out that this is the industry you will work for because earlier you said mo na try mo na magmodeling na try mo na ngayon financial advisor tapos inaaral mo political science so do you think you, you are also a content creator so you can do a lot of things na and you're credible for that all for siguro and how do you think that this what is that in one industry you think you will see yourself um that you will do in the future kasi di ba parang and dami so yeah right right yeah medyo naging plot twist siya di ba because i never actually saw myself in this industry i always thought that i was going to become a lawyer or i was going to work in a profession under the legal field so i wanted to become a lawyer ever since I was in grade school. So I was already honing myself. I was reading CODAS. I was joining debate orgs. I was in uh, Model United Nations because I love to talk about politics. I love to debate also. So when I joined the financial services industry, everyone around me was shocked. Di ba Paul say ka? Ba't pinapunta sa, sa finance? <laughs> so medyo naging plot twist siya for everyone. And actually, if I were to pursue the legal career, everything is laid out for me because my, dot, my dad already has a law firm. Diba? So if I if I took up my license, I passed, and then went out into the adulting world, I would already have a job ready for me, right? But in this industry, I started from scratch. So I didn't have the connections. I didn't have so much knowledge about finance. And like I've mentioned earlier, when I first joined, Diba? I was reaching out people, they were rejecting me, I was facing with a lot of no's. And then my mentor reached out to me and we sat down. So she said, okay, the reason why you're struggling right now is you have to understand that people buy not because of what you sell, but because of why you sell. So you know the saying that people buy people first. So then I remembered why I even started. I could earn just as much in another industry, right? But why the insurance industry? 
and it was because I saw the value of insurance. I saw the value of financial planning. And not because I received the benefits of a policy, but because I was not able to. So back then, actually, my tita died with a heart attack in 2018. And she was diagnosed with a heart problem in 2014. Pa. But because we needed a budget of almost 2 million for her maintenance and for her surgery, she had to put it off. And what she did was, even with that heart problem, she was working as a real estate agent. So she was going out, running errands. And when she was about to schedule her surgery, she ended up passing away two months before the scheduled date. So if only, if only she was insured at that time, or she had that criticals or income protection benefit, she would have already gotten a surgery right away. And, you know, she died at 33 years old. So, medyo bata pa, no? And, and I saw the value of it. And that was when I started surrounding myself with more successful financial advisors. And I saw the lifestyle that they had it. They were traveling. They they were buying all cars. They had real estate property. Sabi ko, ang, ang ganda ng lifestyle nila. Diba? Parang gusto ko din ng ganon. And when I surrounded myself with them, I realized that this industry is all about relationships. So, I always remember that, you know, for you to be able to, you know, or to convince a client to get your services or to choose you as their financial advisor, they need to like you first. That's why I sell myself first before I sell any sort of product or plan. And um, that's why I knew that this industry was for me. Because now, every time I meet with a client, I get so excited. Now, even though I, they're not going to get any, or I'm not going to earn, parang na excited pa din ako to, to teach them. Because I know one way or another, I gave them value. And they learned something out of it. So that's when I knew na talagang passion ko siya. Even though I'm not earning from TikTok directly, I still put out content. Because I love to teach people and I love seeing how or re- receiving their messages of how, you know, it really changed their lifestyle. Ganun siya. So, I, I definitely found a lot of joy and I found a lot of meaning in this business and I, this is something that I see myself doing for a very long time. Wow. So, I guess this will, that concludes our interview for today. Thank you so much. At the Antoinette Lol one <laughs> Okay. Just so okay. Say, okay lang yan. Oh. Okay, thank you so much, Antoinette, for gracing us with your presence. Grabe, and dami ko natutunan. And um, it made me more sure that um, what we are feeling is valid. And I guess that's it. Any more comments for our vid viewers? Any more comments? Um, I would say or siguro a last piece of advice, um, as someone who is also considered young, or siguro yung mga Gen Z, I would say, don't use your 20s as, you know, a time for you to find your calling or to find your purpose. I would say, use your 20s as a time for you to figure out what you don't want to do in life. So, I see a lot of people, especially now that they're about to enter college or they're choosing a course, parang napapresyo sila masyado na kala nila that, that course will dictate whatever path they have after college. So, um, make use of your 20s to take more risks, to take a, take a lot of opportunities. If an opportunity presents itself, like what happened to me, just take it and figure it out along the way. So, when someone offers you to join an industry, just try it out, try a business venture and be as aggressive as you can because you do have that unfair advantage of taking more risks and learning along the way. So that's all I can do. And thank you again, Ampi, for, for inviting me, for giving me the chance to provide massive value to all your uh, viewers. Okay, that's it. I would, If you want to see more of Antoinette, I would leave a link down below for her TikTok account. That's it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.